do you want to demo something on your end? Do you want to show us something? Sure, yeah. Um, should I open a new tab just so I don't get an infinite? Yep. Let me know and I'll switch to your screen. Uh, yeah, you should be good too. Okay, let's see. Yep, I'm looking at your screen right now. What are you going right. to demo for us today? I guess um, I guess I should show off some of the typed language because that's what I've been oh, okay. kind of famous yeah. for. Yeah, so. just to set the stage, what is that? And how does it compare? Because there's this other, is it a language? LaTeX or LaTeX? I LaTeX, don't know how yeah. it's pronounced. LaTeX? Uh, the, apparently it's law, law tech according to the LaTeX foundation, but everyone just kind of says, they say all different things. It's, it's kind of a pronunciation disaster. There's no, no one really follows their advice. People just say how they learned it. Oh, okay. So yeah. what are they? Are they like similars like LaTeX and typist? Are they languages that you use for writing text or what are they? Yeah, they're really, um, they're used most heavily in like academic math for writing textbooks and papers. At least that's what LaTeX is used most for. But they're basically like languages that compile to PDFs or images. So there, there are also other things that kind of do this. Like I know they're Puppeteer, no, not Puppeteer, Play, is it Playwright? There's one like thing on the back end that kind of does a similar thing. They can render PDFs. I, I'm not sure what it is. It's like a JavaScript package. But you can really do it. You can use it for anything that you're generating notes or documents or... Yeah, it's it's largely like a, an academic thing, though. Mm, what do you use it for? For your math classes or...? Yeah, for the most part, for submitting homework. I'm, I'm not someone who takes notes, really. It's never worked out for me. So I just... We have to type up our math into a, a printable document. If you're a math major, that's a pretty common requirement. They don't let you handwrite it anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's mostly what I use it for. But I also, I kind of just use it now as a stand-in for any kind of writing that I have to do for school. Because if you're taking notes that you're going to look at yourself or people in the computer science world are going to look at, right? Markdown is great and there's a lot of support for it. But if you have to give it to someone who's outside of that, like, I guess you can compile it to a PDF and give it to them. But like, you can't give Markdown to a normal person. They're going to freak <laughs> out when they see all the hashtags and stuff. Uh -huh. So it's like, it's like that, but you have much more control than you can do any kind of arbitrary layout rather than just Markdown headings and links and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. So that's 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 I guess the basic intro. Here's a um, what you can do with it. So this package I have right here is just something I threw together in a few days as kind of a joke. And what it does pretty much is generate nonsensical math papers. So I have a, a little plugin called Types Preview, which lets you just generate like a live web view of the document you're currently editing. So if I enter that, you can see it'll pop up this paper that's just browser rendered. Mm -hmm. And we can zoom in and see it's just like all random. Bijective constructible algebra, the anti-standard Zilber groupoid lemma for anti-standard groupoid is extremely Sounds like relatable. something you would have written. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, this is, I want to go back and improve this one day because there's like quite a lot of small mistakes in it. Like you can see right here. Oh, I guess that's someone's name. I thought that was about, but yeah, there's like repeated words and like a bunch of weird mistakes, uh -huh. but it was a fun project and you can see it's, the language is very fast. So if I were to change anything in the seed here, it's, there's no random numbers in this language because it's deterministic, but like this is now a new paper. I guess it's kind of hard to see that anything was switched, but if we look, there's 10 references. If I add more text down here and switch back, now there's seven references. So it, it regenerates the whole paper each time. And I had to do like all pseudo random number generation because yeah, there's no, there's no math random standard library in this language. Mm, and you do all of this in typist, right? Yes, yeah, there's, this is kind of the, the main template page, but here you can see, I can zoom out a little bit to show this is a 800 line file. That's mostly because 
I'm storing like a bunch of like word databases basically. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, yeah, like a bunch of symbols, a bunch of stuff like this. Um, and yeah, it's all kind of, it lets you like use for loops and stuff. And are and you the only one? Are you the only one in your school that does this? How do how do you, how do others use it? I don't, I don't think they're using Vim or NeoVim. I guess they're dedicated tools that do this, or yeah, there's um, there's kind of other math majors I know will use uh, LaTeX and Overleaf. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. It's basically nope. like a web editor for LaTeX, and it lets you just kind of. Like it, it's basically what I just showed, except all web based, and it's a lot slower than oh, like my setup like a is. Google Docs for yeah, exactly, yeah, LaTeX, okay. And no one is really using Types. Types is very, it's like it's coming out of Germany. It's very new. Like pretty much no one at my school. No, and why did you go for Types and not LaTeX? I tried LaTeX initially because uh, you kind of have to as a math major. It's just the standard that you learn. And it was so bad. And I'm like very into optimizing things. I had been using Vim. I had a Vim plus LaTeX set up for a while. Mm -hmm. But I thought someone has got to have made like a better version of LaTeX by now. It's probably written in Rust too. And I looked it up sure enough. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so yeah, I just... I tried it out. I was a little hesitant to switch, but the more I looked into it, the more the the cooler it is. Because LaTeX doesn't have like control flow at all. It's just kind of like markdown. Whereas this language has first class. Like I can show, for example, say you're familiar with the problem FizzBuzz. Mm, I've heard it in Prime's videos, but I'm not I'm not a programmer, by the way. I just hear them talk. Oh, I got you. And <laughs> yeah. It's pretty much um, you want to print out the first 100 numbers or whatever. And then if it's divisible by three, you print fizz. If it's divisible by five, you print buzz. If it's divisible by both, so like 15, then you print fizz buzz. And otherwise, you just print the number. So you could like do that theoretically in this language very easily. Like I can declare a for loop just like in Python and then like go through 100 values, right? And then in here use control flow so it's mm. kind of weird it's not all that intuitive it's calc dot remainder and then you you pass it like that instead of like normal modulo so that's uh that'll let me see if it's fizz i'm actually going to declare a variable here and say let uh answer equals and then an empty string so if it's divisible by three answer so you can will... you can add logic in your text then and how exactly, would this benefit yeah. you well it would allow you to like arbitrarily lay out very complicated textbooks or diagrams or anything like that. You can kind of calculate and automatically generate a bunch of pages. Um, so it's very, and then why is this throwing an error here? Control WD, expected Boolean O if equals zero, of course. Yeah, so like if you want to conditionally render things or just complicated layouts, so I'll add buzz to that, and I'll, I'll be able to show you in a minute what this looks like. So we're almost good there, but if it's neither divisible, we just want to make the answer. So if the answer equals just an empty string, we want to say the answer equals the string equivalent of i. And that's good, so mm. we can just... The number that you set, right? Just print the number. Right, right. Uh, okay. The LSP for all of this is great, by the way. So then we're done with that, and we could just basically render in content. So I'm going to use what's called a box, and then in here just render the answer. Hold on. And now, what do you use for the LSP? Is there a NeoVim dedicated plugin uh, or language server? or? Yes, there is. It's called TinyMist oh. LSP. It's developed by these Chinese guys. <laughs> and they are really, they're really brilliant. This is a excellent LSP, and is it, it has like support for still maintained. Exporting. Oh yeah, big time. It's it's got a. I'm actually a an occasional maintainer, at I, I help them write documentation because their English is a little bit iffy sometimes. Oh okay. Um, but yeah, that's basically, and then we can have like an inset. 
Oops. And you can see here, we've got FizzBuzz rendering in a PDF, which is mm. pretty interesting. Oh. Looks like there's something weird about this. Oh, that makes sense. I accidentally used a three instead of a five. Oh. So that's easy fix. There we go. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. 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 And have you found um real use case for this um logic that you can implement in your files? I kind of have been using it for my board game. That's really like in shambles at the moment. I don't have any working solution, but for laying out like cards, like playing cards, because mm -hmm. you can overlay a bunch of text and stuff, that's really cool. It'll be a lot more useful during the school year. It's definitely like a note-taking kind of math homework type language, definitely. But I can see also how people could use it to maybe generate sales reports or any kind of professional document, mm -hmm. anything like that. Yeah, so you don't go out to another tool to do the math and all that stuff. You can do it inside the document and yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And there's any kind of arbitrary math. You can also what's cool is do styling based on like regex and stuff. So you can say show for regex of fizz. If we want to turn this green, we can say set text and then green. And then I'll do a global regex on the file and render all of those as green. And you could really do anything with this. You could transform it in any way you want, which is really powerful. Mm. And is this types more human friendly, the language itself? Because I did remember using LaTeX or math back in school and to type a formula, it was a pain in the, you know, yeah. uh, just fractions. I don't remember the exact. Um, you have to syntax. backslash frac. Yeah. Yeah. It's bad. Uh, it, it, it is definitely, this is beyond the scripting, like similar to Markdown, you also have headings and stuff. So you can do stuff like that. Define headings with equal sign, which is a little weird. I don't know why they swapped equal sign and hashtag, but, and then math is like, say that I want like a summation. I could do like that uh, for the summation symbol. And then to get subscript pretty easy, like I could do N equals zero. And then to get superscript, let's say we want to go to N, you just do the little caret. Then we've got, that looks a little strange. I'm not sure exactly why. Maybe we need to surround in parentheses here. Um, that, I don't, oh, there we go, yeah. Mm. That's, that's still slightly strange. I guess maybe multi-line math. I, I haven't done like a sum in a while, but you can also do stuff like say an integral check actually that my LSP is integral. Yeah. Mm. From, I don't know, zero to a hundred and then oh. give you a nice. And then fractions are also, as opposed to the backslash, you can just do like A over B and then it'll- And it'll that's it? A fraction. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's quite cool. Yeah, it's exactly like you would, you would think it would be. So super nice for typing out math. Would a professional writer, you know, just like a book writer benefit of using types? Do you have an idea or is it more oriented to math people and people that need a lot of formulas and stuff? Oh, it's totally like for anyone, especially writers, actually. If you go to types, not types.app, I guess types universe uh, is a good source. You can see all the kind of plugins people have written for this. So there is like you can see like quantum circuit diagrams here. So, I mean, this is like math people, but you can also- Electronic stuff as well, right? Yeah, and like a lot of people use resumes, which is great because you can just kind of use a config file and plug in your stuff and then it like auto fills everything into the resume for you. That's a great use oh. for it. Yeah, and it's got, it's got great like layouting for any kind of, I don't know. I've used it also in the past for presentations because you can set the page size to anything you want. Mm -hmm. So you can just kind of auto generate and you can see all they do is like type basically markdown headings and it generates the PowerPoint presentation for you. Can you do like, um, have you heard about plant UML, like the diagrams? Uh, 
UML. Yeah. Um, like for for what field is it for? It's uh. Let me show you here real quick. There's this thing. Uh, Am I good to go back to this tab? I don't wanna. Uh, hold on. Let me switch here. There, there we go. So right. here, let me switch. It's just diagrams. Uh, let me minimize this. Like a uh, class diagram, for example. Notice that they have ex examples here for classes. They have mm. them listed here. UML related stuff, computer science. Gotcha, I mean. gotcha. Yes, yeah. There, there is a package for that. I've had to do that in in the past. Oh, so you can do that there as well, right? You can pretty much. There's there's one package that everyone uses called Fletcher that lets you draw anything, and people build all these plugins on top of that. And yeah, there's really mm. you can you can pretty much do anything. I think. Maybe Fletcher's, yeah, it, it supports any kind of arbitrary diagram. Like there's oh. a whole syntax for. Interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff then. Okay. Okay. It can pretty much, and people have made like 3D games and PDFs with this. It's, it's like capable of doing anything pretty much. Okay. So anyone then can use type. Is this not just for math people? It's just for book writers? Everyone in general, then. Yeah, I, I never use anything like Google Docs anymore. I'm doing all my writing in types, and then I just... Because you can export it to a PDF, and it's really fast. You can send it to anyone. Oh, awesome. Okay. Um, I switched to our screen. Do you want to show something else in there? In of them or... Is there anything you're like curious about in terms of my workflow or I'm happy to talk about whatever. I was interested in that types because I've been wanting to learn LaTeX, but the small um, experience I had with it, I was like, no, man, I, I just don't like typing all these brackets or curly braces. No, it's just like, no. Yeah. But uh, I do, I do see the appeal. So it's quite nice. Um, Let's see. If we need to share something on your screen, we can switch to it at any time. Um, I had a question as well. Because you're working as an intern at um, one or multiple companies, has that benefit? Um, have you learned a lot of stuff from that experience, you know, working as an intern? How has your experience been 